Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to hire a contractor for your social media marketing agency, the traits you should be looking for, as well as the skills that the contractor should have to just absolutely kill it for your social media marketing agency. Now, first things first, I'm gonna be giving you a little background info on my personal experience with contractors, with uh, building out my team for my social media marketing agency. At this point, I've had five different uh, contractors, media buyers, to handle my agency clients. Right now, I've got two people in my team, but previous to that, I had three different contractors. And look, these contractors were good, right? They were B players, but they weren't A players. And one of the biggest actions that I took for my agency was creating this incredible hiring process where by the end, I had an A player. And you guys have to understand the difference between an, a B player, having a B player take care of your agency clients and having an A player do that is completely different, right? It's not a 10% increment, right? It's a 100X increment. So we wanna make sure that the person that we are hiring is an A player and also that they're gonna be the best person uh, to do the job for us because I truly believe that this is a topic that is very overlooked in the social media marketing agency space. A lot of people just focus on signing clients. And look, if you don't follow the guidelines that I'm gonna be giving you today and you get a quality contractor, it's gonna be very hard for you to keep your agency clients because quite simply, you're not gonna be able to get them results. And also that's gonna manifest in the confidence that you use in a, uh, a sales school, right? Uh, and so it's gonna also impact your sales negatively because what I can tell you guys is when you have rock solid confidence in your service delivery, that's gonna show up in your sales. It's gonna be much easier for you to land and sign SMMA clients. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, as I said, there's gonna be two sections. Number one is gonna be traits and number two is gonna be skills. I actually believe that traits is more important than skills and I'll be talking about that in just a second. A lot of people just focus on like their, their screenshots and like, can you show me the, the return on investment that you're getting for you know your clients, et cetera, et cetera. And what you guys have to remember is that this contractor is gonna be ideally an employee later down the line, right? We don't wanna hire this person and like fire them in, in three months and then have to go through the hiring process again because we wanna build a lot of chemistry with this person. We wanna enroll this person into our agency mission so that it's a long-term thing and it is much more blissful to build an agency that way. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that I want you guys to consider is where's my pen, there we go, is the traits. So let me see, okay, traits. And I'm gonna divide this into do's and don'ts, okay? So what is a trait that you are looking for? Actually, let's start with the don'ts. First things first is you do not wanna be, you don't, you don't want this person to be an entrepreneur, okay? Very important that you don't do this. Why? Because entrepreneurs, we are wired different. We wanna create things, we wanna lead, we're ambitious, we are never satisfied, right? And, and so we are not fine taking a B role, which a lot of people are, right? A lot of people think that like the only noble thing is to be an entrepreneur and you guys have to understand that there's people out there who are completely fine taking a B role. In fact, they love taking a more behind the scenes role. And that those are the people that we're looking for, right? So we do not wanna be an entrepreneur, especially because an entrepreneur, they will join your team, right? They will gain a lot of experience, maybe an expertise from you about uh, building an agency, and then they'll go ahead and build theirs, right? And, and so they'll leave you, and you won't be able to turn them into an employee, and it will just be a headache for you, okay? Even if they can get really good work done. So that is the first thing that we wanna do. The second thing is lifestyle, okay? So it's important that they're not the typical person who want to live in Bali and who want to like travel the world and, and they're gonna be off the grid all the time, right? We basically want a person that is pretty predictable, right? That, that likes to go about their routine, that is gonna be predictable in their work, who's gonna show up for team calls, et cetera, et cetera. We don't want this person to be traveling around the world 24 seven, obviously with the current landscape, that's not possible, right? Another don't is you do not want this person to be a white label agency. Very important, okay? Why is this? Basically, we want them to come into our ecosystem, right? We want them to come as a freelancer and appear to the communication and reporting protocols that we have set in place for our agency. With uh, a white label agency, you're basically adhering to their protocols. It honestly adds like different layers of communication and it's just a mess for the client. And honestly, I think it's cheating the client because the value of, uh, of your agency, right? And my agency is creating an incredible ecosystem. If you're having another agency do that, then your agency really adds no value and there's no reason to exist, right? So that is the don'ts. Now on the do's, number one, this is the main thing for me. Live for craft. 
right? The lift for your craft is very important to me because I genuinely want to see that they are passionate about their craft, right? It's not just something that they're doing to make money, right? And look, you might be thinking like most people are just doing it for the money and that is completely wrong. And you realize when you interview a lot of people, when you get a large volume of people through your hiring process, you realize that there's different layers to being a media buyer, that there's really different type of people, right? There's people that truly live their craft. They have mentors, they you know, they read books proactively on the subject, they watch videos, they take courses, etc., etc., and really become more valuable in their skill. And honestly, it just really shows when they are passionate about the craft. The second thing is proactive, okay? Honestly, this is just a trait that I look for every single person in my team. And it's just, are they hungry? Do they have the right work ethic? Are they proactive? Are they gonna be proactive in, in communication? Are they gonna be proactive in reporting, in launching new ads, et cetera, et cetera? Or do I have to chase them and get them to do something, right? Because really, if you're trying to remove yourself as much from the equation, as much from your agency as possible, which is really the goal, um, then they better be proactive, right? Because otherwise you're gonna have to be chasing them all the time. And honestly, I've had it, right? I've had a team members that weren't just very proactive and it's just a nightmare. So that's really the second thing that you wanna keep in mind. You want them to be really, really proactive. And number three is, and this is a bit of a weird one, but for me it's really important. Humble, okay? Now, those of you in my mentorship program, you know about the four-step uh, interview process that I put together, the hiring process, where you basically get a very large pool of qualified contractors and you interview them. And really the last time I interviewed people for the media buyer position, I interviewed around 80 people. So I had a lot of conversations and it was a one month plus. And there were a lot of people that just had a sense of cockiness, a sense of almost arrogance, right? Um, and, and basically, just this error that they, they thought they knew a lot, right? And what I found to be extremely valuable in a team member is a person that's not only humble when it comes to their personality, but as well as what they actually know about the subject, right? Because a person that is cocky and a bit arrogant and, you know, boasts about, you know, how much they know and, and just what, a, what an expert they are and a guru, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, those are really the people that really stagnate, right? That they're not developing themselves because quite frankly, why would they, right? They think they know it all. And th those are the type of people that I'm not looking for. I'm looking for people that are hungry to develop themselves, to keep consistently uh, learning, right? And so those are the people that I'm looking for. And that is why I do not want cocky uh, and arrogant people. Even though it might trick you into thinking, oh, this person is very confident, right? I want them in my team because they're so confident in their, uh, in their area of expertise. That is actually what you don't want, right? Yes, you want them to be confident in their area of expertise, and I'll talk about what skills we're looking for, but you don't want them to be arrogant or cocky around their area of expertise because that just really tells you a lot about their character. And the final thing that I did forget, you know, speaking of confidence, you do not want this person to be like you, okay? And this, honestly, I think this is the biggest mistake people make when hiring people for their team, especially as you start out uh, in entrepreneurship, et cetera, et cetera. You're basically looking for someone that resembles you, that likes the same stuff as, as you do, that reads the same books, that, you know, listens to the same podcast, that, you know, carries themselves in the same way, that are maybe confident or, or a bit cocky, right? That is one of the biggest mistakes you can make when hiring someone for your team because you don't want people that act like you. You want people that complement you. So you want to diagnose what your weaknesses are and bring people in that complement those weaknesses, right? That are strong in your areas of weaknesses and that is how you actually build a successful team right because let's just say that for example copywriting is not my thing i'm going to bring someone in that knows a lot about copyright or let's just say that reporting is not my thing i'm going to bring in someone that really knows how to report that really knows how to build an incredible reporting ecosystem right those are just examples uh, but that is one of the things that i want you guys to keep in mind you're not looking for someone that resembles you or that looks like you or that you would really get along with right because we're not looking for a friend right yes for a friend or a partner or a boyfriend or a girlfriend yes you look for things that, that you guys have in common, but it is actually the opposite when it comes to hiring someone for your team. We wanna find the, the ways that we are not alike and, and see the ways that we can complement each other. So that is that for the actual traits. Let me raise this real quick. And what we're gonna talk about right now is skills. And when it comes to skills, there's mainly two things that you need to remember because I made this and mistakes myself, right? The mistake is typically, hey, let me see some screenshots of past campaigns. Let me get your return on investment on past campaigns, right? And there's a, a big problem with that. Number one is people can fake screenshots. So if anything, get them to actually share their screen with you. A lot of people won't have access to their ad accounts anymore, uh, maybe because you know they, they, were, they were in a past agency, et cetera, et cetera. But if they actually do, then have them share their screen uh, with you. And the other thing is that is not the only metric that matters because yes, like, you know, there's media buyers that, you know, could take literally just two week performance, right? Where they've had the best performance in the world and then cherry pick that and give that to you, right? And pretty much every single media buyer in the world will have had a week or two weeks where they got like 4X return on investment or, or 8X return in like a specific campaign, right? And quite frankly, that's not really crazy, right? Uh, and so what we want to look instead is number one, niche, right? 
you really want to make sure that they run ads in your niche in the past, right? So if you're doing e-commerce, you want to find someone who has done e-commerce ads because they are completely different to someone who has done real estate ads, right? Those are lead gen ads. We, uh, e-commerce, the KPI that we're optimizing for is a sale. So it is completely different to get someone to buy something online than to get someone to fill in a form, okay? So it is completely different, right? And we want to make sure that this is a priority, right? Do they have experience in your niche? This is also important because the ad copy is going to be different, right? Uh, do they know how to write ad copy for your specific niche, right? And the second thing that honestly I find much more important than uh, ROAS is how much they've spent in ads, right? This is what actually tells you much more than, than uh, you know, ROAS or, or whatever it is, right? This is what really matters. Why? Because when you spend a lot of money in ads, that is what gives you a lot of experience. It's not so much what you get because, you know, you could be spending, I don't know, like 3K in total a month and you could get like, yeah, you could surely get like 2X, right? But the, the, 3X, the 3K does not compare to spending 100K or even a million in, in ads a month, right? Because as a media buyer, this is what teaches you a lot. Managing a lot of ad spend, splitting it into different avenues, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what actually teaches and makes a, a media buyer. Are really good, right? The actual experience of managing a lot of ad spend and not so much the ROAS, right? Because again, ROAS, you could manage 3K a month, right? Total in your life and you could still get a 2X return on investment. That doesn't really tell me much, right? Because you're playing small. We want people that are playing big, that have had um, that have had a lot of experience. And the final thing I would say is just years in the field, right? And the main commonality here, guys, is just experience. That, that is what we're looking for. We're, we don't care so much about the ROAS, we care more about the actual experience, right? Because trust me, if they've had 10 plus years or five plus years in the field and they've managed a lot of ad spend, I can tell you that they're probably a good media buyer, right? Because they have a lot, a lot of experience and not, not too many people will trust them with 100K or even a million if they weren't good enough, right? Whereas the people that are actually playing it small, it's completely different, right? Because no one has trusted them with that much ad spend and uh, also they don't have a, as much experience. So that is what we're looking for in a contractor for our social media marketing agency. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys are now ready to hire just a kick-ass uh, media buyer for your agency and take things up a level. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. It really means a ton. Also leave down in the comments any questions or any comments you may have. If you haven't checked out my free SMMA masterclass on how to sign and keep four-figure retainer clients, Go ahead and do so. There's nothing for sale and I've been getting insane feedback on this masterclass. And the final thing is if you haven't joined the free client closures community, the free private mentorship community that I've got on Facebook, go ahead and do so. It's honestly an incredible community. We're growing day by day and it's full of people trying to scale their agency and level up in life. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always guys, hope everything is going well in your agency journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.